Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to play Pokemon TCG. Compared to other TCGs, Pokemon's actually really easy to play and it's a lot of fun. Pokemon has been a huge part of my childhood um, and I really love playing it, so I hope you guys give it a shot. And if you do, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. There are essentially only three kinds of cards in Pokemon. Here you have the Pokemon itself, you have the energy card, and you have trainer cards. There are going to be variations of these three cards, but don't worry too much about it. Uh, Pokemon's fairly intuitive, everything will be explained on the card, so let's jump in. Here you have an example of a Pokemon. In this case, it's Clefairy. Here you have the type of the Pokemon, the HP, the stage of the Pokemon. You have two attacks here in the middle. You have the weakness, resistance, and the retreat cost. That's essentially all you have to know about this card in order to play it. Here you have a basic fire energy. Energies are what you attach to your Pokemon in order for it to use its attacks. All right, and lastly, we have trainer cards. In this case, this is a supporter trainer. There are various different kinds of trainer cards, which we'll look at in a little bit. Essentially, you use these cards in order to activate its effects during your turn. Here are five different variations of Pokemon. Here's an example of a evolution Pokemon. It is a stage one Pokemon, and it says right here, evolves from a Voltorb. This means that you cannot play this card directly onto your bench, you have to actually evolve it. You have to have a Voltorb in your bench for one turn, and then evolve it into an Electrode the next turn. Here's an example of a V Pokemon. This is a Rapid Strike Urshifu V. Uh, this card may look drastically different from the typical Pokemon card, but it works in essentially exactly the same way. It is a basic Pokemon. As a type, he has the HP, and it, its attacks are over here. Uh, the only difference between this and a regular Pokemon is the V rule. Uh, it essentially means that if this Pokemon is knocked out, your opponent draws two prize cards instead of one. And here you have the V Max. This is a Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. It essentially works as an evolution of the V Pokemon. Here you can see it is a V Max stage which means it evolves from a Rapid Strike Urshifu V. Uh, everything else works in exactly the same way. Um, here you have a VMAX rule instead of a V rule, uh, in which case if this Pokemon is knocked out, your opponent draws three prize cards instead of two or one. These are typically really, really powerful Pokemon that you want to have as attackers in your deck. Uh, in this particular case, um, this is the main attacker of my deck. Here are two more examples of energy cards. On the left here, we have a basic fighting energy. And on the right, you have a special energy. Special energies essentially work in a similar way to basic energies in that you can attach this to your Pokemon, but it has different effects. In this case, you can attach this to a rapid strike Pokemon, and it counts as any combination of two water or fighting energy. The only difference between this and an energy card is that you can only use four of these in your deck instead of, um, in the case of basic energies, you can pack as many as you want. Here are three different kinds of trainer cards. We've already taken a look at the supporter type trainer card. Next, we have the item type trainer card. You can pack as many as four of each type of item card in your deck, just as any other card but you can use as many item trainer cards as you want during your turn. As opposed to supporter cards, you can only use one supporter per turn, which says on the card here, you may only play one supporter during your turn. Next, we have the stadium trainer. So only one stadium can exist on the field at any one time. So if your opponent ha happens to have a stadium on the field, you can play this, and your opponent has to discard their stadium. That also works the other way. All right, now that we have some of the basics down, let's take a look at what we need in order to play. Of course, you need two players in order to play this game. You need a 
one deck of 60 cards per player. You need damage counters in order to keep track of the damage dealt to your Pokemon. You need these markers, or some kind of marker, in order to indicate if a Pokemon is burned or poisoned. And finally, you need a coin. There are going to be various instances where you need a coin. You can use any coin. I prefer to use this wonderful vintage Lugia metal coin. You can start the match by calling heads or tails and then flipping a coin to see who goes first. In this case, it's tails. So if I had called heads, my opponent would go first. Before we begin, allow me to explain the different zones here on the field. Here you have your deck, your discard pile, you have your active Pokemon zone, you have your bench. You can put a maximum of five Pokemon onto your bench and you have your prize pool. You start off with six cards on your prize pool. Once you've determined who goes first, you may now draw your hand. You start off with seven cards in your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take a look at your hand and determine how many basic Pokemon you have in your hand. You now have to place at least one basic Pokemon onto the field. In this case, I'll put my Rapid Strike Urshifu V face down into my active zone, and I'll put my Sobble onto the bench face down. Once your opponent is ready, you now draw six cards onto the prize pool. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll explain what the prize pool is in a little bit. Now you're ready to begin the game. Once your opponent is ready, you may now flip your Pokemon face up together. Once you've determined who goes first, that person may now begin their turn. Let's say that in this case, it is our turn. You begin the turn by drawing a card we now have Rapid Strike Urshifu V in our active zone and Sobble in our bench. We have a trainer, Cynthia's Ambition. You can only attach one energy card onto your Pokemon once per turn. So in this case, I have the option of either attaching my Fighting Energy or my Rapid Strike Energy onto either of my Pokemon. And I have one Supporter Trainer, which you can only play one of, per turn. In this case, I'll attach my Rapid Strike energy onto Urshifu. During your first turn, you cannot declare an attack. Uh, you also cannot evolve your Pokemon. As I said before, it takes one turn for you to evolve your Pokemon. So if you've placed your Pokemon onto your bench this turn, you cannot evolve it this turn. You have to evolve it the next turn. There are three different win conditions in this game. Uh, here you have your prize pool. Every time you knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon, you can draw one card from your prize pool. If you knock out a V Pokemon, you can draw two. And if you knock out a V Max or V Star, you can take three prizes if you knock out that Pokemon. So the win conditions of the game are if you finish your prize pool and if you've drawn all your prize cards onto your hand, you win the game, or if your opponent has no Pokemon left in play. The third win condition is that if your opponent runs out of cards in their deck, you win the game. Alright, let's set up an example of an attack. Here you have Urshifu V with a Rapid Strike energy attached to it. That'll be enough to use the Strafe attack. During my turn, I can choose to engage in that attack. So if I use Strafe, I'll be able to deal 30 damage to my opponent's Pokemon. As you can see, my opponent's Pokemon has 220 HP, so 30 damage is not going to be enough to knock it out. Make sure that you read the effect of each attack on your Pokemon. The effect of this is that you may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. So after dealing 30 damage, I switch to my Sobble. 
All right, let's set up an example of a knockout. So, as you can see, once again, you have Urshifu V. It has a very high damage attack called 100 Furious Blows, which d does 150 damage. But I'm still missing one energy from this. This counts as two energy, and it requires three. Two fighting and one colorless. I have one fighting energy in my hand, which I'll attach to my Urshifu V. I can now use the second attack. So I'll go ahead and use that attack onto my opponent's Houndor, since it only has a 60 damage or 60 HP, it gets knocked out. And since I knocked out a Pokemon, I am now able to draw one prize card from my prize pool. Now my opponent has to pick a Pokemon to replace that Pokemon in the active spot. Now let me give you an example of a retreat. So, once again, taking a look at the card, the retreat cost of this Pokemon is two colorless energy. Colorless refers to any energy type. So, in this particular case, I can discard my Rapid Strike energy, which counts as two energy, into my discard pile, and retreat my Rapid Strike Urshifu onto the bench, and put Sobble out onto the active spot. During your turn, you can choose to use one of your trainer cards. In this case, I'll use Cynthia's Ambition. It says, draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's turn, draw cards until you have eight. So let's just say that my Pokemon wasn't knocked out last turn, so I can only draw up to five cards in my hand. I use Cynthia's Ambition, put it in my discard pile. I now have two cards in my hand, which means I can draw three so that I can have five cards in my hand. I drew three more supporters. Uh, since I already used Cynthia's Ambition, which is a supporter trainer card, I can no longer use a supporter because you can only play one supporter during your turn. Now, let's take for example, I have another type of tr trainer card, in this case, an item card. I can use as many as I want during my turn. So I'll go ahead and use this level ball. The effect of level ball is that I can search my deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less, reveal it, and put it into the hand. Then shuffle your deck. I'll go ahead and use level ball and search my deck for a another Sobble. Sobble has 60 HP, which in this case is less than 90, so it qualifies as a card that I can search. Now I can put Sobble onto the bench. All right, guys, I think I've given you enough for you guys to start playing. So uh, there are a number of things that I have not explained yet uh, in this video, so I will be uploading more, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys are interested in the full rule book, you can get your rule book from a Elite Trainer Box and a couple of other uh, different Pokemon products. You can also go to their website and take a, a look at the rulebook there. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoy the video. I will be making more of these videos, I hope. Um, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below.